church and the building take on the title of the church. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So when the Lord come to present unto himself his glorious church, his church is also called the bride. And the bride is the people of God. That's when the marriage will take place. The Lord, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Now, I, I, I hope I don't get too deep for you. But when the church is resurrected to meet the Lord in the air, that's when the millennium will start. The term millennium means a thousand years. And during the time of the thousand year reign, bless God, the devil, the father of the wicked, shall be bound for that time. While he's bound for that time, then there will be peace on earth. Nobody will be able to commit any evil while Satan is in bondage. While after the thousand years is over, the Bible said the devil shall be loose. Thank God to go to the four corners of the earth to gather them together to battle, to gather Gog and Magog, which are the descendants of Noah, to battle. That's the last battle or war to take place on the earth, which is called the Battle of Armageddon. But if you want to escape all those troubles and make the first resurrection, repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive ye the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and obey the word of God and come out of these fake churches that you're in. All right? All right, next question. Hallelujah. Come on, let's move quick, brothers. If you got microphones, let's move quick, please. Pastor Jenny. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me in the New Testament where did the apostles teach that uh, you're cursed with a curse? If you don't tithe. Where the apostles preached it? They taught that. Jesus or the apostles. All right. In the New Testament. Give me the book of Hebrews quickly. Amen. Let's get Melchizedek. In the book of Hebrews chapter 7. All right. And we'll start reading at verse 1. All right. For this Melchizedek, king of Salaam. And uh, then we'll go back to the book of Malachi right. also. Right. All right. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 1. Yes. This, for this Melchizedek, king of Salaam, uh -huh. priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king, yes. and blessed him, uh -huh. to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, uh -huh. first being by interpretation king of righteousness. Now what you're quoting is the Old Testament in the book of Malachi, I believe, yes. when the Bible said, will a man rob God? Rob God, that's right. And uh, of course, a man will rob God, a man been robbing God since man been here. Malachi chapter 3. But what? the mistake that preachers have made, they just focus on time only right. and just focus on that only but the prophet Malachi didn't just deal with tithes he dealt with tithes and offering that's right real quick Malachi chapter 3 we're at verse 8 Parliament. will a man rob God yes he will amen will a man rob God and again I say yes he will Yet ye have robbed The Lord said you've done it. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? But many of us play ignorant and want to ask, well, how in the world did we rob God? And how did God say it was done? In tithes. And what else? And offering. Not just one thing. That's right. Not just one thing. Tithe. And offering. And offering. Your question was, well, where did uh, God preach it? Or where did Jesus preach it? Or where did the apostles preach it? Mm -hmm. Well, in order for it to be changed, then God will give the God would have given the apostles a revelation to preach against it. That's right. But there is no New Testament precept where the apostles or Jesus preached against it. Mm -hmm. And if the apostles or Jesus didn't preach against it, don't you hear Jesus said all things must be fulfilled mm -hmm. that are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, the and this is the prophets, the prophets. and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. All right, read will, quick. Will a man rob God? Uh -huh. Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Yes. In tithes and offerings. Uh -huh. You are cursed with a curse. You are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So you just can't look at where you just say tithes, he said tithe and offering. And offering. And offering. You're cursed with the curse if you don't do neither. That's right. All right. You're cursed with the curse for you have robbed me, uh -huh. even this whole nation. Yeah. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. And, and the storehouse is not the preacher's pocket. That's right. And the storehouse is not the preacher's house. That's right. You see, when we pay tithes and offerings, that's what keeps the broadcast going. That's how churches got built. That's how we clothe naked folk, and that's how we feed hungry uh, with tithing and offering. We have many hundreds and hundreds of poor brothers and sisters all around the world, uh, in foreign countries, in India, in Africa. We buy land so they can grow food, so they can have something to eat. All of that fall in obeying God. How do we get that land? Through tithing and, and offering. And offering. 
Bring ye all the tithes. I had one man say, you're the first preacher I ever met that do right by God's money. Mm -hmm. I'm scared of God. Amen. I'm scared to death of God. Yeah. And you wouldn't get me to go to hell over a half a penny. <laughs> all right. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and, that there may be meat in my yes. house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. If I will not open you the windows God of heaven. God say, I will open you up, I will open up windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. God say, if you do this, he'll give you a blessing. That there shall not be all right, give me the book to of Hebrew quickly it. now. Let's get it quick, because I got a lot of questions I want to get. Back in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and we're still at verse 1. Get that verse 1 quickly. For well, this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High now, God. Now, Melchizedek was God. Yeah. Someone say Melchizedek was God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone say, how can you say that? The Bible said he had no beginning of days. If you have no beginning, that means you always was. Then the Bible said he had no end of life. When it says you have no end of life, that means you always will be. And he said he don't have no father, mm -hmm. no mother. Without the scent, meaning you ain't got no relatives, no beginning, no ending. That's God. There's only one king of righteousness. That's right. And ain't no man that's king of righteousness. That's God. That's right. Real quick. For this Melchizedek, king of Salaam, priest of the Most High God. Yes. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Yeah. First being by interpretation king of righteousness. And you got to remember, we're the children of Abraham by faith, and we're still giving Melchizedek, which is God Almighty, a tenth. All right. First being by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that also king of Salaam. There's only one king of Salaam, meaning king of peace. Which is king of peace. It ain't that's that's God without father. Wait a minute. God don't have no father without father. God don't have no father because he is father without mother. God don't have no mother without the sin. God don't have no relatives. I mean, neither beginning of days. He has no beginning that me. He always was and he have no ending. He always will be. That's God. That's right. Oh, yes. We still pay tithing. We still pay offering. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. Come on, you brothers with the microphone. Let's move quick, please. Hey, greetings, Pastor. Uh, my question is about honor of mother and father. Yes. Uh, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm tearing for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And uh, Acts 5.32 says that the Holy Ghost is given to those who obey God. Yes. Now, the fifth commandment is honor thy mother, thy father. Mm -hmm. My mother and father divorced. They remarried. Now they want me to go spend time with each of them in, in the family. If I'm under that roof uh -huh. and I'm supposed to honor my mother and my father, how can I do that if light is supposed to not have fellowship with darkness, but at the same time, I'm supposed to obey that commandment. How do I do that? When the light don't have fellowship with darkness, that means them that live holy don't indulge in what darkness indulge in. Jesus said, do not after their works. Do not after their works. You can still honor your father and your mother, but you don't condone what your father and mother do. That's evil. Because the Bible said, let's get the nigh father and the nigh mother. Let's move quick, son. My God, man, you got to move quick because I'm way ahead of you. The Bible says you got to deny yourself. Luke. Let's get the book of Luke. Chapter 14 and at verse 26. Move fast. If any man come to me. If any man come to Jesus. And hate not his father. That hate. Hate. That means you got to hate the lifestyle that they live in when their lifestyle contradict the lifestyle that God requires. Mm -hmm. If the father got a second uh, wife and yet his wife is still living, you still honor and respect him as your father. But you can't call that woman mom. Right. Nor can you call that woman by the last name of your fathers because every time that woman use your father last name the woman lie because your father's wife is still living now every time if your father name is mr black and mr black divorced mrs black and then mr black marry miss brown and now Miss Brown take on the title Miss Black. Miss Brown is a liar because the real Mrs. Black is still living. And every time Mrs. Br Miss Brown used the name of Mr. Black, she lied. So you call her uh, by her real name. Uh, how are you, Miss Brown? And if she complained to your father, he disrespect me, just tell your father, no, I didn't respect her. No, no, pop, 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 mama's still living. She's still your wife, and uh, I got to respect God's law first. So don't be ashamed to let your father and mother know how you stand on biblical principle, and you present that biblical principle with humility and respect. Don't argue with them. Don't fight with them. 
But you got to hate the lifestyle. Real quick. If any man come to me and hate not his if father. If any man come to Jesus and hate not his father. And mother. Mother. And wife. Wife. And children. Children. And brethren. Brother. And sisters. Look at Jesus. He ain't got no respect to person, do he? Amen. What else? Yeah, and his own life You got to hate your own life also. You cannot be my disciple. Glory take God, you cannot be his follower. All right, next question. The name Jesus. Yes. I personally believe in the blood of Jesus because mm -hmm. I personally use that. Um, but I hear that it's a lot of different other names for Jesus. So I want to get more clarity about that. All right, let's see how many names that God had. Give me the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's see how many names do God Zechariah, have. Zechariah, chapter 14. Listen, follow me in the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And at the ninth verse. All right, Zechariah 14 and 9, follow me and get me. I want to soak you a little. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day. In that day. Shall there be one Lord. And how many names is one Lord going to have? And his name one. Two. One. Three. One. Four. One. Five. One. Six. His name one. Somebody is a liar. That's right. Now let me help you out, my sister. What is your name, sister? Uh, Mrs. Venus Tamer. What's that? Venus Tamer. Tamer. Now, now, if you go to a foreign country, they will say your name in their language, but it won't take away from the fact it's your name. That's right. In Spanish, my Spanish brothers and sisters, how do you say the name Jesus in your language? Jesus, correct? It's still Jesus. Still Jesus. The Hebrews say Yeshua. The reason why they say Yeshua because one, there is no J's in the Hebrew grammar. Joshua is pronounced in Hebrew Yeshua. Right. Yeshua is the name Jesus in Hebrew. That's right. Jacob had a brother named Esau. In Arabic, Esau is pronounced Isa. Mm -hmm. Isa. In Arabic, the name Isa is Jesus. Jesus. So if I say Isa, that's Jesus. Hashua, that's Jesus. Jesus, that's Jesus. that's Jesus. Whatever language. You see, God is an intelligent God. He know everybody that don't have one language. In the book of Hebrew. Listen at this quickly. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, and at verse 13. Acts 26, 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. At midday, O king, I saw a light from heaven. Above the brightness of the sun. And what? Shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Uh -huh. And when we were all fallen to the earth. We fell to the earth. I heard a voice speaking I heard me. a voice speak to me. And saying in the Hebrew tongue. You see, he spoke to Paul in Hebrew. Saying, so, 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 why persecutest, so thou why me? persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. Now, a blind person would say, you see that, Pastor Jennings? Even the Lord spoke to Paul in Hebrew. Why would the Lord talk to Paul in any other language? Right. Why would the Lord talk to Paul in German if Paul was a Jew? That's right. God ain't going to talk to me in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm English. Yeah. And if God got a message for me, it's going to come in my language. That's right. Why? So I can understand it. For that message to be profitable, and I'll walk away with the understanding, if I'm Arabic and don't know no Hebrew, why would God talk to me in the Hebrew tongue? That's right. Paul was a Benjamite. Mm -hmm. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So the Lord spoke to him in the, in Hebrew, the Hebrew tongue, tongue and said, Saul, Saul, I persecutest thou me. And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. So in Hebrew, the Lord said, I'm Yeshua. Yeshua. But in English, he said, I'm Jesus. So yes, we preach in the name of Yeshua. We preach in the name of Isa. We preach in the name of Jesus. We preach in the name to the English folk, Jesus. Be known unto you all. Hey. Don't you hear Jesus told his apostles, go ye into all the world. Right. 
You think the Lord going to give them a command like that if everybody spoke one language? That's right. He's not going to do that. No. My God, he's going he to give the apostles, hey, hey, give me the 19th chapter of the book of Psalms, if you will. Yeah. The Bible says uh, there is no speech. Mm -hmm. No language. Where their voice is not heard. I want to show you this. Psalms 19, we'll start at verse 1. Listen. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And, and the, the firmament, firmament showeth his, show his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech. There is no speech. Nor language. Nor language. Where their voice is not heard. Everywhere the apostles went, they brought in all type of languages and all type of speeches so people can get the word of God. Their line is going out to all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. Hey, whatever your language is, God have a way of bringing his name and his word to you. Right. All right, next question. That's right. Oh, it's me? Come on, brother. Oh, all right. Um, in Acts chapter 16, verse 14, what did it mean when the Lord opened the heart of Lydia when she attended to what Paul spoke? Yes. Acts, All right, Acts. Chapter 16 and at verse 14. Uh -huh. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, uh -huh. of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, yes. heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. The Bible said that her heart was opened. Open. Then the Bible gave you the reason. Which worship God heard us. Yes. Which the Lord opened. And that she attended. She attended. Unto the things which were spoken of Paul. You see, the apostle Paul was preaching the word of God and Lydia's heart got open. And when her heart came open, she accepted. That's Letting it. you know, in order for the word of God to be profitable unto you, you've got to receive it with the open heart. Open when up. you have an open heart, you will submit yourself to it and you will obey. That's right. Whose heart the Lord opened. Who opened it? The Lord opened. God can move on me to preach it, but God got to deal with your heart. That's right. Eh? That's right. God can move on me to tell you what he said, but God does the work on your heart. Mm -hmm. My God, when the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when he work on your heart, I won't have no problems getting you in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And when she don't, was baptized. Don't you hear the word of God say, the Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked. The they heart. were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he commanded all of them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So when Lydia's heart came open, that means she was receptive to God everlasting word. And I'm pretty sure that's why y'all here today, because your heart came open. Oh, yeah. Amen. If your heart wasn't open, you wouldn't be here. All right, next question. Um, Pastor, before I'm baptized, I wanted to know how often does God allow us to repent of the same sin before he's just kind of done with us over it? <laughs> how often? Not the same question that they asked Jesus. Yeah. How many times That's right. do I forgive yeah. my brother? <laughs> That's why the Bible says he's long-suffering to us with. How many times do I forgive my brother? Jesus began to tell him when seven times, seven times, seven pass over. So as long as you live and there's mercy, God will forgive you as long as you fall on the mercy of God. But at the same time, we don't want to become comfortable in our sins and use God's mercy for granted because a lot of preachers preach that God's mercy can't run out. Yes, it can. Yes, can. The Bible said God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. I read verse 21. Listen. Then came Peter to him. And said, Lord, Lord, how shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Yes. Till seven times. Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him. Notice Peter threw out one number. Do, 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 till do seven, we do times. It till seven times. Seven times. All right. Jesus saith unto him. Jesus said to him. I say not unto thee until seven times. No, not just seven times. But until 70 times seven. Until 70 times seven. Times seven. So when you go before God and you do fall in sin, now. True repentance is not just saying I'm sorry. Anybody can say I'm sorry. True repentance is when your heart is convicted. And when your heart is convicted, you want to surrender what you're doing. Now, one thing about sin, sin work in favor of your flesh. That's why, a lot of, that's why you struggle with it so much and you don't want to give it up. 
And you got to have a preacher that constantly work on your flesh. Yeah. And that's why a lot of folk don't like Pastor Jennings because I'm an anti-flesh killer. That's right. Eh? Yeah. We come along with the Bible and break up your folly ground and break up your sin and speak against your wickedness. You want to shoot dice. You want to shoot pull. You want to smoke weed for municipal purposes. That's right. <laughs> eh? Hey Amen. You want to uh, dye your hair and wear somebody else's hair and wear your fake eyelashes and wear ankle chains and lipstick and be homosexuals and men marry men and women marry women and play the lottery and men with long hair like women. Yeah. You want to do that. Here I come with the lawnmower of the scripture, cutting every weed of wickedness with God everlasting word. You got to have a preacher. When you got a preacher that stay on you, when God work, it, it, it helps you to overcome. But when you follow these sugar daddy preachers that got a congregation of sugar babies, you become comfortable in your sins and you are dying, go to hell, God knows. Now I rejoice. What is that? Now I rejoice. Yes, chapter and verse. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 9. I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry. Not that you was made sorry. But that ye sorrow oh, to repentance. God that ye sorrow unto repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. You was made sorry after a godly manner. That ye might receive damage by us in nothing. That you may receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Worketh repentance to what direction? To salvation. Ah. Amen. Everything in here wants to be sorry about their sins. Then let's get an understanding. Once you repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be perfect. No. That's why you got to be taught. That's right. There's a lot of things we don't know is wrong. It's like a child. No child, no woman came into the delivery room and that child walked out of her womb. Come on. Come on, Me and my wife got seven kids. None walked out. If they would have walked out, I would have walked out. <laughs> yeah. And then if you look at the development of a child, what is the first thing that form of a child in the womb of the mother? It's the head. What is the first thing that comes from the womb of the woman? And the rest of the body need help. The birth of the child represents the condition of man. Come on. Come on, man. The first thing that we need deliverance from is our mind. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. That's why the word of God work on reshaping the mind. Right. You change a person's thought process, it'll change their heart. Yeah. Once the mind change, heart change. Once heart change, your physical behavior change. Yeah. That's right. And when your physical behavior change, you are show forth a pattern of good works. Right. So now the mind is the first thing that needs to be delivered from the sinful world of darkness. And as a child need help to bring the rest of the body from the womb of the woman, we need help as we need deliverance to come from the womb of sin. As the doctor is there to help the child to come out, God is there to help us to come out of sin. Are you listening? Yeah. All right, next question. Hey, my question is, uh, if a man divorces his first wife and marries his second wife, and his first wife dies, do he have to remarry his second wife? All right. Let's get the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, if you please. Romans chapter 7, we're starting at verse 1. Yes. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. That what? How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. The question is, when you got your second one, was she really yours to begin with? Yeah. Ask the question. Oh, yeah. When you got your second one, was it really yours in the eyes of God? That's right. All right. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Uh -huh. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Yes. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman. Now, this, this, this scripture always make people tip out early. <laughs> <laughs> the woman that have a husband is bound by the law to her husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth all right but if the husband be dead if the husband be in prison if the husband be dead weak dead blind dead drunk 
Dead. Suck cigarettes. Dead. Short. Dead. Lose his teeth. Dead. Lose one eye. Dead. Death. 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 Let the husband be dying. Dead. Ah, you got to be dead. Dead. All right? But if the husband be dead, uh -huh. she is loosed from the law of her husband. Yes. So then if. if here, here, here now. So then if. Here's the puncher right here. If. While her husband lives. While it, her husband is alive. She and she's married to, to another, another man, man. She shall be called an adulteress. No, she shall be called a Christian. She shall be called an adulteress. No, a Christian. An adulteress. What about she's on the choir? She shall be called an adulteress. A usher. An adulteress. Organ player. An adulteress. Organ uh, choir director. An adulteress. Amen. If you got your second wife while your first wife was living, that's not your wife. That's right. That's right. So when your first wife die, your second marriage is not recognizable in the eyes of God. That's right. For to be recognizable in the eyes of God, you can't get married again until the first one died. Yeah. So if the first one was alive, when you got the second one, you got to repent for that adultery, and then when the first one died, you got to marry the second one so God can recognize it. That's right. And you're not supposed to marry down there on 77th Street, if you got a 77th Street. <laughs> she ain't preaching. No. All she's doing is telling them, look, Pastor Jenna said, uh, meet him over there at 77th Street. That's all Mary did. did. Jesus said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. And my brother, he go meet go me. Go into Galilee. Go into Galilee. And there shall they see me. Hey, guess you going to see me there. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Huh? <laughs> let's, let's, let's read this. In, in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 28. I'm not making this. Just let's read this. Matthew, chapter 28, and at verse 10. Matthew 28 and 10. I want it to be good for your Jerry Curl head reverend. That's right. Get this. St. Matthew, chapter 28, and we're at the 10th verse. Follow me. At the 9th verse. All right. And as they went to tell his disciples. As they went to tell the disciples. Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All Jesus. hail. Met them saying, all hell. And they came and held them by the feet and worshipped him. Yes. Then said Jesus unto them. Then said Jesus unto them. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. No, go preach. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Oh, where you get the preaching from? That's right. You don't need an anointing to go tell someone, hey, meet me at Starbucks. <laughs> you don't need an anointing? No, no. Well, Pastor Jennings, the Bible said Philip had four daughters. Weren't they preachers? No. No. They were prophetess. Prophetesses. Given to a woman to prophesy by God's permission. And the same and prophesying man. is not preaching. No. Prophesy prophesying is the foretelling of the event that's going to come. God can move on that mother by the Spirit of God, and that mother will prophesy according to the moving of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost will not make none of her actions violate the Bible because God don't make you sin. That's right. That's right. God don't speak against sin and then anoint you to commit an act of sin. No. So if God move on that woman to prophesy, that woman going to prophesy, the Lord says it's going to be an earthquake here in five days. When the Lord, and the Lord move on her to say that, she say it, she's done. That's she it. sit down. That's right. That's right. She ain't getting up. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Be a fool now. Now, how are you going to be up there loud and boisterous like a man when the Bible have a direct commandment, 1 Peter? 1 Peter chapter 3, we're at verse 4. I'm going to lay some good doctrine with the Bible. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're at the fourth verse. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4 says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart and let that the, which is let not the, corruptible. Let it be... Get, begin at verse 3. At verse 3. All right. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning. Of plaiting the hair. Plaiting the hair, wearing of gold, gold putting, putting on, on the apparel. apparel. But let it be. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible. Yes. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet Wait spirit. Wait a minute. How did he instruct the women to be? Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. How did God feel about that? Which is in the sight of God of great price. Amen. You was taught that God called and sent women to preach the gospel. Yeah. I challenge any preacher in the state of California. That's right. God has never called and sent a woman to preach the gospel since he's been God. That's right. 
Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Amen. Well, Pastor Jim, my wife is a preacher. Your wife is deceived. Yeah. What about my mama? She's deceived. She's deceived. What about my grandmother? <laughs> That's right. She's deceived. That's right. Think of it. 11 chapter 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the position of the man and the position of the woman and see where things have changed. Amen. And these men today ain't got no spine. No. They ain't got no board in their back. That's right. Something's wrong with you. That's right. A man that's a real man don't follow a woman. No. And a woman that's a real woman don't want no man to follow her. Amen. Amen. There's a position of order yeah. in the Bible. Oh, yeah. You hear the old troublemaking UP, UPC, and PAW, you that's in these fake Pentecostal and apples and stolid churches. That's right. I'll make you lick everything up in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? First Corinthians chapter 11 and we're at verse 3. Come on, son. But I would have you know. I want you to know this. That the head of every man is Christ. I want you to know the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman. And the head of the woman. Is the man. What happened to you, man? Amen. What happened to you? How is it you the head at home? Yeah. Then when you come to church, you slide down to the tail. That's right. Am I right? Amen. What's wrong with you? Amen. What happened to your manhood? Yeah. God set this up. That's right. Not your weak bishop. That's right. Any church in California, they got women preachers in a false church. Yeah. Every preacher that endorses it is a false prophet. Oh, yeah. And if you here today and you endorse it, you're a false prophet. That's right. The head of the woman is the man. You know why you, you know, women, you know why the preachers use you in the pulpit? They use you to raise money. That's because right. you women raise money better than men. Yeah. They use you. Oh, yeah. You don't have a woman in the Bible that's called the bishop. No. You don't have a woman in the Bible called an evangelist. That's right. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a deaconess. Yeah. You don't have a woman in the Bible called an assistant pastor. That's right. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a bishop. Amen. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a missionary. That's right. What, Pastor Jennings? Give me the fifth chapter, First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5, and we're starting at verse 1. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I want you to get this, California. Mm -hmm. You missionaries out here. Yeah. Who told you you was a missionary? Yeah. Who gave you the right to be a missionary? That's right. Who gave you that title? Go ahead. What scripture gave you that title? Yeah. Under what authority are you wearing such a title? Go ahead. Go ahead. Missionary Robin. <laughs> missionary Martha. Missionary Stacy. Yes. Let's go to Bible and see what the Bible called the old women mm. and the young sisters. First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. That's why the preachers tell you don't listen to Pastor Jennings. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they know this Bible going to rearrange everything. That's we're going to come back to the, what the word of God said. That's right. And we're going to take men's tradition and just push it right down the toilet. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. You see what I mean? You see? <laughs> we, 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 we got the broom of the scriptures. Oh, yes. <laughs> huh? That's right. And, and, and if anything get through the bristles, we're going to back up. <laughs> and come right back again. That's right. Just like a GPE, G, uh, P, what you call it in your car? GPS. GPS is in your car because you lost. This, what you think this is? Oh, yeah. This is your spiritual GPS system. That's right. Because you lost. Yeah. Too much men tradition came in the church and you lost your journey towards the kingdom of God. That's right. All that stuff derailed you. Oh, yeah. We want to put you back on the straight path. Yes. Forget about what you've been taught. Yeah. Forget about your love and years in the organization. Mm -hmm. See what the Bible said. What the Bible said, you got to say amen to. That's right. If I truly got the Holy Ghost from heaven, the Holy Ghost in me never fights the Holy Word. No. Even if it hurt me, I'm going to come up to it. What it say? First Timothy chapter five. We'll start at verse one. Missionary board, hmm. junior missionary board. Where you get this rubbish? Amen. 
junior pastors. Listen, you're not even a junior devil. You're just of the devil. <clears throat> you hold the tradition of men. That's right. Junior pastors, junior elders. That's like a $3 bill and a $4 bill. Don't exist. That's right. Not here in America. No. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 5. And starting at verse 1. Follow me. Rebuke not an elder, Rebuke but, not an, an elder. but entreat him as a father. What else? And the younger men as brethren. All right, the young men, we call them what? Brethren. And the elder women. What do we call them? The elder women are the older women in the church. What we call them? As mothers. No, first ladies. Mothers. Missionaries. The elder women as mothers. No, senior missionary board. The elder women as mothers. Somebody done made a mess. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jennings, you got to understand where the word missionary come from. Mm. I studied Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, and it come from the word katakrakis and <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. That's where it comes from. <laughs> They come with all kind of folly. Amen. I don't care nothing about that mess. That's right. When you done with your Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and your Shawshank, I'm coming on back to Bible. That's right. Eh? Amen. Let's come back to Bible. That's it. If you're not going to believe the Bible, close your church up and stop faking. Yeah. Either do it like the Bible said or stay out of church. Amen. Because when Jesus come here, he's coming back for the same thing he left. Oh, yeah. And he did not leave this trash that you see now. No. You men see this rubbish going on in the church and you scared. Hmm. Sit around there and get a, in a group among yourselves and talk about it. Man, we got to do something, man. <coughs> we got to do something. The church, they're just, they just going haywire. Well, let's pray. I done prayed already. Bible said, how can you hear without a preacher? Amen. How can you preach except to be sent? Mm -hmm. The tradition of men mm -hmm. is causing the church to fall like dominoes. Oh, yeah. Organization after organization after organization after organization. They're falling too, brother. Amen. I, I know they're falling because I'm hearing, I'm hearing from the world. Mm -hmm. I get thousands of letters a day. Thousands. Dubai, Greece, Switzerland, Ireland, Holland, Puerto Rico, Spain, Madrid, throughout America, Canada, South America, the Fiji Islands, mm. all across the South Pacific. I'm hearing from the world Lord. every day. Amen. The people are hungry because they're not getting fed. Yeah. Think of it. You can tell when you're not getting fed. Have you ever sat in church for years? And yet spiritually, you see you ain't going nowhere? It's true. When you find yourself in church for years, but yet spiritually, you ain't going nowhere, oh, you're dying. Oh, yeah. I don't care how much you shout. Shouting ain't going to give you strength. No. Well, Pastor Jennings, I fast and pray. That's good. But that's not enough. Mm -hmm. Because the main important part of worship is the word. Right. And if the word is not in that church, you ain't got no more church. No more church. Huh? That's right. If the word of God is not preached in that church, you don't have no more church. Amen. Amen. What did the Bible call the elderly women? The elder women as mothers. No, missionaries. The elder women as mothers. We're going to have a senior missionary board anniversary. The elder women as mothers. What do we call our young? The younger as sisters. Wait a minute. The preacher... Supposed to call the young women what? Sisters. Sweetheart. Sisters. Sugar pie. Sisters. Honey, the honey, honey bun. Sisters. Baby girl. Sisters. That's what the preachers call you now. That's right. They look at them young sisters in the church, shake their hand. Well, praise the Lord, baby. Amen. <laughs> These preachers claim they got so much anointing, they come right out the pulpit with their hands over their ears, snorking like they're a pig on crack. <laughs> with an organ playing behind them, and they got so much anointing, and they come out there and sit right on your lap. Yes, they will. It's supposed to be anointing. You got nothing but a pervert for a bishop. That's right. That's right. Amen. You're following a pervert. Amen. 
because it is written, the Holy Ghost do not behave itself unseemly. That means God don't make nobody conduct themselves in the wrong way. That's right. Yep. Ain't no preacher got no business sitting his backside on your lap, sister. No. And he's so anointed. <laughs> that's not anointing. That's perverseness. That's right. Out there sitting on the lap of men. Let and you men grinning. Go ahead, Bishop. He rocking all back and forth on you. My Lord. <laughs> Amen. See, many don't like what I'm saying. I don't care if they don't. The reason why they don't like what I'm saying, because what I'm saying describe the trash that they're in that they call church. Yeah. It is the nature of a dog to love filth. That's right. Yeah, but when you clean that dog up, hmm. he's going to go right back, right back out there in his filth because that's his nature. That's right. We got to have God's nature. Oh, yeah. And to have God's nature, you got to have God's word. That's right. Let's go back to the book of Mark. Everybody all right? Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 8. They want to compare. Mm -hmm. Let's get that. Yeah. Quickly. Quickly. Compare spiritual things. Right. We're spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Follow me in your Bible in the book of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2 and we're at verse 13. Which things also we speak. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom oh, teaches. Oh, no, I'm not going to speak what man speak. No, no, not at all. No, no. Rest assured you, Pastor Jennings ain't going to speak what man speak. Mm -hmm. No, sir. I say like David, in my hasting, I find all men liars. That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey, Amen. That's, that's why these folks, they go to, in these houses today, men don't want to be men. And when men have showed their wife in the Bible, well, honey, you ain't supposed to preach. I don't care what you say. And I don't care what the Bible said. You can listen to that crazy man, Jennings, all you want. I know what the Lord told me. Let me tell you stubborn, hard-haired women that think that way this. The Lord ain't never told you to do anything to transgress the book. That's right. Never. Never. Any woman that says God called and sent you to preach the gospel, you lied on the Lord. That's right. When you didn't know no better, you're not held accountable. But once you come into the knowledge of it, you held accountable. Oh, yeah. You step in that pulpit again, to hell you going. That's right. Let's itemize this with the Bible. Which things also we speak. No, I want to knock out women preachers because it, it's, in my, it's in my bosom. I got to knock it out. Now in the book of Isaiah chapter Amen, 3. Because I know California got a whole, whole lot. lot of them. A whole lot of them. I ain't got, I mean a whole lot of them. <laughs> and you get a bunch of men, a woman is feminine. We as men are supposed to be masculine. Am I right, men? Yeah. Talk back to me. Yeah. So if we as men supposed to be masculine, why when the woman preaches up there, she's acting like a man? Yeah. She's walking across the pulpit like a man, yelling like a man, screaming like a man, kicking her legs up like a man. That's right. Man, you get men that sit under a feminine woman for a long period of time, yeah. he's going to change and pick up her spirit. Oh, yeah. That's why you, it's hard to find a real man walking the street. Yeah. Amen. It's hard to find real men in the hood. Yeah. When I came up in the hood, we mix it up, man. Oh, yeah, we mix, we, we, we mix it up. Oh, yeah. Now you go to the hood, stop, Bill. Stop it. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. Amen. This spirit of timidness yes. is the spirit of timidness yeah. where a man is scared to represent God. He's more scared of his woman. That's right. What happened to your manhood? You was more scared of your woman than you are God. That's true. Preacher's wife rebuked the men in church. The preacher's wife chastised the men in church. The preacher's wife laid the deacons out in church. And they all fold up. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
preacher's wife got to follow the Bible like anybody else. That's right. Or she'll go to hell with anybody else. Amen. The preacher's wife not supposed to have no special privilege. Amen. The preacher's children don't get no special privilege. Amen. And the preacher's, if any of you go to a church and the preacher's wife is the first lady, you're in the devil's church. Oh, yeah. Who is your wife? That she would be called the first lady. This is church. This ain't the White House. Amen. This is church. The first lady is dead. Her name is Eve. Yeah. That's the first lady. Yeah. Get this man-made garbage out of church. This is what made church become so carnal, so fleshy. When I came up, my mother and father used to tell me that the church is the light to the world. Not now. The church and the world have become equal. Every time the world introduced something, these fools in a so-called church want to emulate it. The world rap, church rap. The world twerk, church twerk. That's right. The world dance. They got so-called praise dancers Amen. in a church. Amen. Dancing to some record in church. That's right. And you sit in this filth and don't see nothing wrong with it. What kind of Holy Ghost you got? You cannot have the Holy Ghost that they receive on the day of Pentecost and go along with filth. The Holy Ghost is God, yeah. and God will make his people rise up and rebel yeah. against the wickedness of the world. Glory to God. All of God's people Go rise up Go against the wickedness. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why you think the sinner, the sinner don't respect no church. No. And he shouldn't respect what is called church today because he see the so-called Christian is just like him. He smoke weed, Christian smoke weed. He out there partying and dancing, Christian out there partying and dancing. Right. He out there Saturday night, here we go, come on, here we go. They in church with in the church. same thing. Here we go, here we go. The Bible says in Leviticus 10:10, 10, 10, and that you may put difference that you may put difference between holy, between holy and unholy. It got to be a difference between a church and a club. That's right. It got to be a difference. That's right. It got to be a difference between a church and a club. Amen. You weak men. Wife tell you, I ain't coming out their pulpit. Let's see. Let's see what the Bible says about this women preacher thing. Isaiah chapter 3, we're at verse 12. Read quick. As for my people, children are their oppressors. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And women. Who? Women. Anybody know what a woman is? Raise your hand so I can fire at you. Amen. Women. Rule over them. A, a preacher is a ruler. Yeah. Women rule over them. How did the prophet feel? Oh, my people. No, the, no, no, no. The prophet said, praise the Lord. Oh, my people. He don't sound too happy. He don't sound too happy. Oh, my people. What? They which lead thee. They which lead thee will save you. Cause thee to error. Oh. Amen. The Bible says if they that lead thee cause thee to error, what about going to heaven? And destroy the way of thy paths. A woman leading you shall lead you to hell. Isaiah chapter 9. Did verse you hear me? That's right. You the head of your house. Act like it and man up. Yeah. Stop acting like a little coward in the church. Amen. Amen. You're the man at home, coward in church. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's say it together, class, class, let's say it together. Man at home, man at home. Coward, at church. coward at church. Man at home, man at home. Coward, at church. coward at church. Now will the coward stand up? My Lord. If you're going to be the man at home, Go ahead. you should be a man in church. Go ahead. Talk back to me. Amen. Amen. I'm not preaching male chauvinism. I'm preaching Bible, Bible. here. That's it. That's it. God said he made man in his image. Yeah. Didn't he do so? Oh, yeah. But man have 
embarrassed God to such a degree. He has become a coward. He has become timid. He has become feminine. He acts like a woman. That's right. Man and woman switching down the street. Man and woman switching in the pulpit. That's right. That's right. This is how church has become. Yeah. See, when, when, when you preaching for a speaker's offering, you can't preach like this. Because when a man preach for a speaker's offering, he's counting all them heads. Okay, oh, I can get a good $2,000 out this crowd. Oh, you know he ain't going to preach against no wrong. No way. We come in town and leave. Any money that's collected goes towards the work of the Lord. That's right. None of it go in my pocket, not a dime. That's right. And ain't nobody going to give you no money for killing them. Amen. <laughs> ah, Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, it takes a real man to follow this kind of preaching. Yeah. It's like my, like my brother was talking over there when he testified how he was a gangbanger. I have a whole lot of ex-gangbangers following me. Yeah. And you know what a lot of gangbangers have said that's in the truth of God? They have said, Pastor Jennings, I have no confidence in religion. Many of these men said, these preachers that's up here, they're weak. There's no way I can follow them. They said, but you, Pat, we don't have them come in from the bloods. We don't have them come in from the crypts. We don't have them coming from the gangster disciples. We don't have them coming from MS-13. Amen. We, we don't have a blue-collar gospel. No. We have the gospel. That's it. Are you listening? That's right. I don't care how tough you think you are. God, God. is tougher than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go in the prisons of America and the world. Sometimes prison auditoriums be two and three times bigger than this auditorium. And you think we talk rough in person or over the air. I would love to take you to jail with me. Huh. My God, meetings have got so tense until the prison guards got tensed up. I said, be cool. Be cool. I remember we were preaching against racism in the language that they all understood. 